Good morning students. Welcome to science class. Today we are going to see term 2 6th lesson human organ systems part 3. It's time to revise our previous session portions. So listen carefully students. In last class, we have discussed about skeletal system, muscular system, digestive system, respiratory system and circulatory system. First one is skeletal system. Skeletal system supports our body. It gives our body shape. It protects the delicate organs in our body. Bones, cartilages and joints are the major organs of skeletal system. Two parts of the skeletal system are axial skeleton system and appendicular skeleton system. Axial skeletal system consists of skull, vertebral column and rib cage. It protects the organs. Appendicular skeleton system consists of bones of arms and legs, pelvis and shoulder area. It involved in body movement. So how many bones in a human skeleton? An adult has 206 bones. How many in babies? A newborn baby has 300 bones. So tell me what are bones? A solid network of living cells and protein fibers that are surrounded by deposits of calcium salts. So once again I repeat. What are bones? A solid network of living cells and protein fibers that are surrounded by deposits of calcium salts. Second system we have seen in last class is muscular system. What are the functions of muscular system? Muscles protect your body. They cover most of your skeleton. Muscles also cover most of the organs inside your body. Muscles are like a layer of padding. They surround your abdomen, chest and back and protect your internal organs. How do muscles work? Two muscles are required to move a bone at a joint. When one muscle contracts, the other muscle relaxes. Once again I repeat. Listen students. How do muscles work? Two muscles are required to move a bone at a joint. When one muscle contracts, the other muscle relaxes. So what are the types of muscles? There are three types of muscles in the body. Skeletal muscle, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscles control voluntary actions in the body. Smooth muscles control involuntary actions. Cardiac muscles control your heart. So third system we have discussed in last class is digestive system. Digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and associated glands. What is alimentary canal? It is a long tube includes organs. This system is involved in the conversion of complex food substances into simple forms and absorption of digested food. Once again I repeat, digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and associated glands. This system is involved in the conversion of complex food substances into simple forms and absorption of digested food. Alimentary canal includes mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus. Associated glands for digestion is liver, Gastric glands, industrial glands, pancreas and salivary gland. 
Fourth system we have seen in last class is human respiratory system. Respiratory system supplies oxygen to blood and gets rid of carbon dioxide. It consists of nose and nasal cavity, throat that is pharynx, voice box that is larynx, windpipe that is trachea, bronchial tubes and lungs. The entry of food into the windpipe is prevented by a flap like structure called epiglottis. Once again I repeat, the entry of food into the windpipe is prevented by a flap like structure called epiglottis. Lungs are the main respiratory organ. They are located within the chest cavity. The trachea commonly called windpipe. It is a tube supported by cartilaginous rings that connects the pharynx and the larynx to the lungs, allowing the passage of air. The trachea divides into right and left bronchi and enter into the lungs. They divide further and ends in small air sacs called alveoli. The lungs are covered by a double layered pleura. Exchange of gases by the respiratory system involves three different processes. They are external respiration, internal respiration and cellular respiration. In external respiration, exchange of gases between air in the lungs and in the blood. In internal respiration, exchange of gases between the blood and the cells of the body. In cellular respiration, cells take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Fifth system we have studied in last class is circulatory system. What are the functions of circulatory system? It transports gases, nutrients, hormones and waste. It regulates the body temperature. It protects the body from the harmful pathogens. Heart, blood vessels and blood are the major organs of circulatory system. We will see one by one. First one, heart. Heart is located in the thoracic cavity between the two lungs. The heart is four chambered and is surrounded by a double layered membrane called pericardium. The heart pumps blood continuously throughout our lifetime. Second one is blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue of red color containing plasma and blood cells. There are three types of blood cells namely red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles and blood platelets. That is RBCs. WBCs and blood platelets. RBCs are produced in the bone marrow. Third one, blood vessels. Three types of blood vessels are present in the body. They are arteries, veins and capillaries. They form a closed network through which the blood is circulated. So once again I repeat. Three types of blood vessels are present in the body. They are arteries, veins and capillaries. They form a closed network through which the blood is circulated. Ok students, let's start today's session. Today we are going to learn about nervous system, endocrine system and excretory system. So, above these topics covered into book page number 77 to 81. Students, make a note of important points. If you are having any doubt, note the question in notebook and it will be clarified on the day of reopening. Ok students, today we are going to study about nervous system. Nervous system is well developed in human and is composed of neurons or nerve cells. 
once again i repeat nervous system is well developed in human and is composed of neurons otherwise called nerve cells nervous system includes brain spinal cord sensory organs and nerves what are sensory organs there are five sensory organs they are eyes ears nose tongue and skin important functions of the nervous system along with the endocrine system are conduction and coordination once again i repeat important functions of the nervous system along with the endocrine system are conduction and coordination so nerves combinedly conduct the message from brain and do the action this is the picture of nervous system here brain is the part of the central nervous system that regulates and controls activities throughout the body the site of consciousness and memory brain is a site of consciousness and memory second one spinal cord it is a bundle of nerves extending from the brain stem through the backbone it conducts signals to and from the brain third one peripheral nerves they are the network of nerves what are they they are intercostal nerves radial nerve and femoral nerve so peripheral nerves are the network of nerves and ganglion that carry signals to and from the central nervous system so all the bodily activities voluntary and involuntary are controlled by the nervous system let's see the parts of nervous system one by one first one is brain brain is a complex organ which is placed inside the cranium which is placed inside the cranium see the picture this is brain this is cranium so brain is a complex organ which is placed inside the cranium brain is protected by a three layer tissue coverings called meninges see the picture students brain is protected by a three layer tissue coverings called meninges what are they dura mater arachnoid and pia mater brain has three regions namely fore brain mid brain and hind brain fore brain also called cerebrum mid brain also called cerebellum hind brain also called medulla oblongata it is called brain stem so once again i repeat brain has three regions namely cerebrum cerebellum and medulla oblongata brain is the controlling center of the body once again i repeat brain is the controlling center of the body it controls all the activities of the body do you know students brain is said to store as many as 100 million bits of information in a lifetime once again i repeat brain is said to store as many as 100 million bits of information in a lifetime second important part in nervous system is spinal cord spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata of the hind brain and is enclosed within the vertebral column see the picture students spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata of the hind brain and is enclosed within the vertebral column spinal cord connects the brain to different part of the body through nerves 
Spinal cord connects the brain to different part of the body through nerves. Now we are going to learn about the functions of the nervous system. There are three functions. Sensory input, integration and motor output. Once again repeat. There are three important functions in the nervous system. Sensory input, integration and motor output. In sensory input, the conduction of signals from sensory receptors. In integration, the interpretation of the sensory signals and the formulation of responses. In motor output, the conduction of signals from the brain and spinal cord to effectors such as muscle and gland cells. Once again I repeat, in sensory input, the conduction of signals from sensory receptors. In integration, the interpretation of the sensory signals and the formulation of responses. In motor output, the conduction of signals from the brain and spinal cord to effectors such as muscle and gland cells. Let's see the example. So, I recognize the object and give signal to the brain. So, here I is the sensory input. Brain will do the integration part. I recognize the object and give signal to the brain. Then brain responded and the conduction takes place through the muscles. Here output takes place. Now we are going to learn about sense organs. Sense organs are like the windows to the outside world. There are five sense organs in our body such as eyes, nose, ears, tongue and the skin. Once again I repeat, there are five sense organs in our body such as eyes, nose, ears, tongue and the skin. They make us aware of our surroundings. We are able to see, smell, hear taste and touch only through sense organs. Now we will learn one of the sense organ eyes. We see the world through our eyes. Eyes are help us to see things around us. That is their color, shape, size whether they are near or far, moving or at rest. The eyelids and eyelashes keep the eyes safe. See the picture. This is eyelash. This is eyelid. So eyelids and eyelashes keep the eyes safe. The eye has three main parts namely cornea, iris and pupil. Once again I repeat. The eye has three main parts namely cornea, iris and pupil. See the picture. This is cornea, this is pupil, this is iris. Next sense organ we are going to learn is ears. Ears help to hear and differentiate sounds around us. Ears help to hear and differentiate sounds around us. The ears also help us in maintaining the balance of the body when we are walking, running or climbing. Once again I repeat. The ears are also help us in maintaining the balance of the body when we are walking, running or climbing. The air has three major parts, outer air, middle air and the inner air. See the picture students. This is outer air that is pinna. 
This is inner ear. Nearby stabs. This is middle ear. Nearby ear drum. So the ear has three major parts. They are outer ear, middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear in human beings is made up of an external flap called pinna. Once again I repeat. The outer ear in human beings is made up of an external flap called pinna. Now we are going to learn about the third sense organ skin. Skin is the largest sense organ as it covers the whole body. Once again I repeat. Skin is the largest sense organ as it covers the whole body. The skin helps to feel the things around us by touching that is whether they are hot or cold, smooth or rough, dry or wet, hard or soft. So once again I repeat. The skin helps to feel the things around us by touching that is whether they are hot or cold, smooth or rough, dry or wet, hard or soft. There are three layers in the skin. First layer that is upper layer is called epidermis. See the picture students. Second layer that is in middle dermis. Third layer that is base layer is called hypodermis. Also, skin protects the body from injury and germs and removes some waste. Skin protects the body from injury and germs and removes some waste. Skin also keeps the body moist and regulates the body temperature. Once again repeat. Skin also keeps the body moist and regulates the body temperature. Next. We will learn about functions of the skin. Skin forms an effective barrier against infection by microbes and pathogens. Skin helps us to synthesize vitamin D using sunlight. So once again I repeat. Skin forms an effective barrier against infection by microbes and pathogens. Skin helps us to synthesize Vitamin D using sunlight. Shall we learn about tips to taking care of sense organs? Don't read in dim light. Reading in dim light can cause eye strain but will not damage your eyes. If your eyes feel tired, stop for a while and take a break. Avoid exposing eyes to screens of television, computer, laptop and cell phone for a long time. Students, please avoid exposing eyes to screens of television, computer, laptop and cell phone for a long time. Don't rub your eyes harshly. Don't rub your eyes harshly. Wash your eyes with cold water at regular intervals. Listen students, one should never try to prick ears with toothpicks or hairpins which are dangerous practices because it may puncture the eardrum and cause ear infection. Ears should be protected from hot blows. Ears should be protected from Hot blows. At last, one should bath at least once a day to keep skin clean and fresh. Now, we are going to study about endocrine system. Endocrine system regulates various functions of the body and maintains the internal environment. Endocrine glands are present in the body produce chemical substances called hormones. See the picture students. 
pituitary gland located at the base of the brain pineal gland located at the base of the brain so both the pineal gland and the pituitary gland located at the base of the brain next thyroid gland thyroid gland located at the neck fourth one thymus gland thymus gland located at the chest next one pancreas pancreas located at the abdomen next one adrenal gland adrenal gland located at above the kidney last one gonads gonads located at the pelvic cavity so these are the endocrine glands are present in the body produce chemical substances called hormones once again repeat pituitary gland pineal gland thyroid gland thymus gland pancreas adrenal gland and gonads are the endocrine glands are present in the body produce chemical substances called hormones now we are going to study about excretory system the nitrogenous waste are removed from the body by the excretory system it is composed of kidneys ureters urinary bladder and urethra see the picture students here bean shaped structures called kidney below that tube like structures called ureter this is bladder below that this is urethra so once again i repeat the nitrogenous waste are removed from the body by the excretory system it is composed of kidneys ureters urinary bladder and urethra now we will learn about kidneys these are bean shaped structures present in the abdominal cavity the functional units of the kidney are called nephrons which filter the blood and form the urine once again i repeat these are bean shaped structures present in the abdominal cavity the functional units of the kidney are called nephrons which filter the blood and form the urine see the picture students this is excretory system here renal artery brings blood containing oxygen and urea from the aorta to the kidneys this is renal vein renal vein brings filtered blood from the kidneys to the inferior vena cava this is ureter it carries urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder this is kidneys kidneys regulate the chemical composition of fluids in the body this is urinary bladder an expandable muscular sac that retains urine until it's discharged from the body what is the function of urinary bladder urinary bladder is an expandable muscular sac that retains urine until it is discharged from the body below this urethra this tube through which urine is discharged from the body it is surrounded by muscles that allow us to control urination here aorta means branches of arteries then vena cava means two largest veins students listen why do we drink water our body contains about 70% of water some parts have more water like the gray matter of the brain about 85% and some less like fat cell about 15% we normally consume 
1.5 to 3.5 liters of water every day in the form of food and water. So, we should drink water for maintaining the water level of body. Drink water properly. Okay students, I hope you are all understood about nervous system, endocrine system and excretory system. Now, let's see some textbook pages related to today's topics. Page number 77 explains about nervous system. Nervous system is well developed in human and is composed of neurons or nerve cells. This system includes brain, spinal cord, sensory organs and nerves. The two important functions of the nervous system along with the endocrine system are conduction and coordination. Page number 78 explains about brain, spinal cord and functions of the nervous system. Brain is a complex organ which is placed inside the cranium. It is protected by a three layer tissue coverings called meninges. Spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata of the hind brain and is enclosed with the vertebral column. Sensory input, integration and motor output are the important functions of the nervous system. Next one is sense organs. Sense organs are like the windows to outside world. There are five sense organs in our body such as eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. First sense organ eye. Eyes help us to see things around us. That is their color, shape, size, whether they are near or far, moving or at rest. Page number 79 explains about ears, skin, functions of the skin. Ears helps to hear and differentiate sounds around us. The ears also help us in maintaining the balance of the body when we are walking, running or climbing. Next one, skin. Skin is the largest sense organ as it covers the whole body. The skin helps to feel the things around us by touching. That is whether they are hot or cold, smooth or rough, dry or wet hard or soft. What are the functions of the skin? Skin forms an effective barrier against infection by microbes and pathogens. Skin help us to synthesize vitamin D using sunlight. Page number 80 explains about endocrine system and excretory system. Endocrine system regulates various functions of the body and maintains the internal environment. Pituitary, pineal, thyroid, thymus, pancreas, adrenal and gonads are the glands are present in the body produce chemical substances called hormones. Next one, excretory system. The nitrogenous waste are removed from the body by the excretory system. It is composed of kidney, ureter, urinary bladder and urethra. Next one, kidney. These are bean shaped structures present in the abdominal cavity. The functional units of the kidney are called nephrons which filter the blood and form the urine. See the picture student. This is excretory system. Explain in the page number 81. Okay students, I hope you are all clear with the today's session. It's time for evaluation. Be ready students. Answer the following questions. First question, write the important parts of the eye. Second question, name the five important sense organs. Third question, Write the functions of nervous system. Fourth question, list the endocrine glands found in our body. Fifth question, name the three regions of brain. Okay students, 
सेवेंथ लेसन पार्ट्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर विल स्टार्ट इन नेक्स्ट सेशन थैंक यू